There are certainly grays to what I'm about to talk about, which is censorship. When it comes to James Bond, though, I think the problem with this discussion is that it's been floating around Bond for a very, very long time about what is and is not okay, both in the films and in the books. And now the news is coming out that new editions of Ian Fleming's James Bond novels are being edited to remove material that is deemed offensive to modern audiences. Now, it's worth noting that right now, what this means is racially offensive. So, this is pretty much just terms that refer to black people for the most part. And it's worth noting as well that Ian Fleming himself was actually on board with editing Live and Let Die before he died in 1964. They had actually gone through that book at the time, and they had kind of done some uh, finagling with the text in order to actually edit some of it out, because some of it was seen as like, well, I don't really know if I should have said that, I don't really like that, hey, I'm going to take that out. And you know what, when it comes to the original author, I do think that this also becomes something a little more gray. You have characters, uh, you know, I should say people, but uh, he is a character, in the fictional and real world, like George Lucas, who have gone through their own works and changed things over time. The problem is that's going to leave a lot of things up for debate, and it also does lead to the question of where do you stop? Now, I don't want to just go slippery slope on this whole one. Slippery slope is something that can actually happen, uh, but it also can be very disingenuous, where you take a very innocuous example and you say, well, what about this example, though? And what about this one? And it could get worse and worse. But when it comes to Bond, I think we do have a lot of real-world examples of censorship or attempted censorship and attempted changes that make this change not seem as innocent as it could be. These new novels are actually going to be omitting offensive passages basically around race, for the most part. A statement was given saying, We at Ian Fleming Publications reviewed the text of the original Bond books and decided our best course of action was to follow Ian's lead. We have made changes to Live and Let Die that he himself authorized. Speaking to the Sunday Telegraph, they also said, Following Ian's approach, we looked at the instances of several racial terms across the books and removed a number of individual words or else swapped them for terms that are more accepted today, but in keeping with the period in which the books were written. It's worth noting that these new Bond books will also have a disclaimer, which in my opinion is pretty much a trigger warning, uh, no matter how you look at it, saying this book was written at a time when terms and attitudes which might be considered offensive by modern readers were commonplace. A number of updates have been made in this edition, while keeping as close as possible to the original text and period, in which it was set. So why do I care about this? Do I really care if anyone's dropping the N-word in James Bond or really being racially insensitive? Not really, no. But as someone with an actual degree in teaching English, someone with a literature degree, one of my big issues with this whole thing is just the idea of changing Bond. Now, Bond can be changed in certain ways. Obviously, the Craig films made some changes that are divisive to some and loved by others, I personally very much liked that era of Bond movies, and I don't think there's anything wrong with doing something new. However, the problem is all of the attempted and suggested changes by both the general public and even people in Hollywood around Bond. Hey, maybe Bond shouldn't be a white guy. Maybe Bond should be a person of color. When we get to that, it's like, well, I mean, that doesn't necessarily super affect who he is, so okay. But then we get to Bond should be a woman. Okay, well, why should Bond be a woman? Oh, because Bond is with other women, so it would cause a, basically, if you put a person of color who is a woman in this role, then it would increase representation. I've seen that argument a lot online, too, to the point where even Daniel Craig himself said, hey, listen, make a woman spy movie, that would be awesome, make a good one, but that's not James Bond, that's just not who James Bond is. You know, you even have one of the stars of this franchise of movies saying, hey, listen, yeah, cool, heart's in the right place, but that's not who Bond is. And I do really think that that's where a lot of things come from, is heart's in the right place, but that's not who Bond is. If Ian Fleming wants to make changes to his own novels while he's alive, more power to him. Can we disagree with some of those changes? Sure, absolutely. And one of the big reasons I disagree with changes like this, especially when they're done posthumously, is the fact that one, yes, while Ian Fleming may have made this decision one time, Nobody was able to get his opinion on it later on, the man is dead, and two, 
We also have revisionist history. I think one of the problems is that people want everyone to be very black and white, good and bad. They want to be able to look at these fictional characters and say, well, this is a hero. This is a good person. There's nothing really wrong about them. But there's a lot of offensive things about book James Bond that actually serve a purpose. One of those things is showing the time period he's in. And by changing some of these items, you are actually doing a bit of a disservice to that time period. I know that it hurts people's feelings to think that people would drop things like the N-word or people would say pejorative terms about people of color, but that is definitely how the world was. And I think it's worth actually looking at and saying, hey, look, that wasn't okay. James Bond himself can be a mostly good guy who did good things and still have some bad attitudes inside of him that reflect the culture of that time. And I actually believe that changing those things changes who the character is in a lot of ways, believe it or not. That doesn't mean he has to outwardly be racist. It doesn't mean he outwardly has to be an asshole. But I do think that when you start fiddling with these things and actually changing them around and trying to appease modern audiences by changing the old work, you're doing a bit of a disservice to history. Because I think it's worth looking at and noting, hey, this was not good. This was not an okay way to talk. Even though it was at the time, this never really should have been okay without actually changing it. Because now we're actually just removing it as if it never happened. We're covering it up. That to me doesn't seem like progressive. That to me comes off as revisionist history. Let's pretend Bond never said that. Let's, uh, let's take that out. And I think one of the problems for me is when they're wording this so vaguely, when they're saying that it will be changed in order to get rid of language deemed offensive to modern audiences and saying they worked with sensitivity readers to remove any language that was seen as outdated attitude about race, I think my problem is what is next when it comes to James Bond? We've already gotten a lot of different suggestions of who Bond should be in the movies that are not who he actually ever was, and now we're having his books combed through and removing offensive language. And I guess my problem too is there is actually a lot of offensive attitudes in the James Bond books not in terms of him just being a complete piece of trash, but in terms of him not being a perfect person. If we look at his attitudes around sexuality, in the first book, like Casino Royale, he actually starts the novel with a very big bias that he got from his time in the military. And by the end of the book, he changes his mind and grows as a person. He's not perfect, and he's not ever meant to be perfect. He's very distrustful, naturally, of everyone, and he's a product of his military experience. And you can't actually look at people alive in the 40s and act like they trusted everyone or they were very good people or even look at them and think they all had good attitudes about women. You know, a good example of this is very obviously the unfortunate true-to-life character of the 1950s and 60s man who would go to work, come home angry and upset and hit his wife. I don't think we should just pretend that kind of thing didn't happen or that kind of attitude didn't exist just because it's uncomfortable, so we take it out now. I think it's worth looking back at the past and saying, wow, we've come further than that. Especially when you look at the, you know, who Bond is in his line of work, where he's pretty much this secret agent who has to deal with a lot of distrust, anger, and a lot of crap. I was talking to friend of the channel, my personal friend Seth, who is our resident Bond expert, and he pointed out some of the examples from Fleming's work that wouldn't necessarily be considered progressive or great by any means, but actually played into who James Bond was as an imperfect character. It's worth noting that, especially around Vesper, who's a character who matters a lot in Casino Royale, there's an entire passage in the book about how much he hates that she's on the trip as well, talking pretty much about how women are just baggage and good for sex. It was showing that Bond was not a great guy at the beginning, but at the end of the book, he's in love with her and his feelings towards women change. This is a character that changed over time and became a better person, and that happens as well in a lot of his novels, where he pretty much changes some of his ideas over time. He even goes from viewing this person as baggage to visiting her gravesite every year and very, very openly grieving her passing. And I think that it's really interesting because you also can see that he doesn't actually refer to women as sexual objects after that. He has real relationships with many of them, such as Tiffany and Diamonds Are Forever. And by the end of the book, they're together. And in the next one, it describes how they drifted apart naturally and they didn't work out. Bond went from being a person that was kind of dehumanizing towards women and dehumanizing towards other people as someone who grew over time. And in a lot of ways, Ian Fleming was actually pretty progressive in the way that he wrote his characters. They were flawed. They weren't just good 
good people because of who they were, and they could change over time and become better, but they were never perfect. They were never characters. And I think for me, whether Fleming was on board or not with changing some of his own works, now unfortunately the man is not alive, it's 2023, and going back and changing these things and revisionist historying it isn't really doing anyone any favors. You know, I think it's very actually okay to be offended by something. I think that's actually a very natural response to being a human, is to be offended by something. You know, you turn on something on TV and it's talking about some horrible crime, and one of the first things you should probably feel is offended that this is happening, that this exists. That outrage, that moral outcry inside of you is a good thing, I truly believe, but I think that when it's turned into something like this, where we're getting sensitivity readers to comb through and change a publication as if none of it ever happened, and as if this character was just a much better guy who was better than the time period he was in, I think that that's a little ridiculous. It does make me wonder at what point they may go after something like the sexual stuff. Because once you start tampering with some of these elements, you will start tampering with the characterization of who James Bond is and how he changed over time. It's not as easy as just changing the offensive and getting the same character out on the other side. That's why you have to be careful when doing things like this. And as someone who did actually teach in a classroom when it came to literature, it's something that kind of makes me cringe and worry a little bit. You know, I'm not saying necessarily that every single person should be subjected to every single horrible, offensive idea, but I do think that once you get out in the real world, there are going to be a lot of people who do not care what offends you, and in fact, they unfortunately are bad actors who look for what offends you in order to upset you, piss you off, and bring you down. And by sort of giving into that, in every avenue, including books, and avoiding it at all costs, I think that that just kind of makes you not prepared for when you actually do get out into the real world and unfortunately have to deal with those people and attitudes in person. It's something that doesn't only do a disservice to Bond, it does a disservice to the past by giving it a pass, by acting like the past was better than it was, and I've even seen examples of this where certain schools won't teach the horrible things that happened in World War II because they're deemed offensive, you are giving the past a pass for being horrible just because you don't want to upset people today. It's worth upsetting people today by looking back and seeing what was bad then that was considered acceptable then and seeing how far we've come and noticing how far the, even the character of Bond has come, how far the writing has come. That doesn't mean anything against Ian Fleming. It just means he was a man born in a different time than we were, writing a different type of stories, and now the character has evolved over time in different ways, some certainly different than the books, and definitely up to the reader or the viewer on screen with the movies if they're better. But when it comes down to editing history, that's something to me that's usually just a no. I'm not a fan. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you very, very much. We are over 115,000 subscribers. And of course, I know that this, it can be a little bit like, uh, well, you know, I don't want to upset people. And I don't really want to actively upset people on purpose either. That's never been my goal. It's just that when it comes down to it, I think that there are certain things that once you start messing with, it becomes hard to stop fiddling with them, to stop going through them and stop kind of policing it. And I think that we need to hold the past accountable without changing it. But let me know what you think down there in the comments. If you are interested in supporting this channel, the join button down there is now active for memberships. There's a lot of different goodies you get by joining that up, and it does help support my channel going forward. Have a fantastic day, and as always, everyone, stay shway.